Good morning, Morgan. Thank you for inviting me. It's a beautiful campus. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's an honor to be here. So, uh, there we go. Uh, I have a little presentation, but before we start, I wanted to let you know that uh, all the materials I will be discussing in my presentation and PowerPoints are available on a file that I created has takeaway points, the names of the software and apps I will be mentioning, um, a list of suitable games in various fields, and also a general bibliography, bibliography on game-based learning and on uh, uh, games in second language acquisition and everything else I will be talking about. And uh, they've been shared, so talk to uh, Gabriele and she will have all the information on how to access them. Uh, here we go, from the beginning. So, uh, so I've been teaching languages for 20, oh my, in August is gonna be 25 years now. And uh, I was educated in the Italian uh, university system, and uh, of course high school, and then I left for America when I was uh, 31 years old. So I learn a lot on my own experience what it means to be in a different culture, different language, and having to survive in that language. And I've always been passionate about learning. But before we start, I would like to uh, take a minute to reflect on our own experiences with uh, games and learning. So I created a little, um, a little test, and I'm about to tell you something that we never tell our students which is take your mobile phones out if you have them. Actually, I do uh, have my students have uh, use uh, technology a lot. And I have created a little survey. So if you can, uh, we're gonna be using your browsers. Uh, there's a little app too, but the app requires uh, for you to log in. It's a little complicated. So let's use your browser instead and uh, point your browsers to kahoot.it. And I definitely have an American accent at this point. I used to speak British English, that's long gone. So please raise your hands if something's not clear and I will um, clarify at any point. So, okay, so it's a general quick survey. Video games are new. How do you feel about games? No previous knowledge necessary. So, uh, as you can see, there is a, um, a um, picture will open up on your phone and basically will ask you to, for a code. And then you will be asked to select a username. And I'm preaching to the choir, you've all used code before, I'm sure. So you will be given a code. So that's the code. It has an endearing and slightly annoying music. I muted. It's kind of cute. So, 277799 is the pin. And then you can select a username. As I tell my students, it's designed to pick on bad words in all the languages possible. And yet, my students have found creative ways to overrule that. All students in Italy, too, uh, where I use this. Oh, there's a gamer. Good. Hello, friend. Okay. Good to go. More people joining in. Good to go. Shall we start? More takers? More takers? No? Start. Up. Oh, okay. So you select the color that corresponds to your answer. Have you ever played video games? No, never, seldom, occasionally, often. Okay, 16, good. 
I think we're done. Yeah. Time up. Okay, uh, I'm preaching to the choir here, but even if you never have or, uh, okay, or uh, sell them, that's perfectly fine. I'm an educator, so I'm here to give some information. Which of these video games have you never heard of? Pac-Man, Super Mario Bros, Heavy Rain, I have heard about all of them. Okay, so I have five fellow gamers because the control question is Heavy Rain. If you know this one game, then you're a gamer. Because people in my generation, I was born in 1963, they will all have heard about Pac-Man, but the younger generation, they will all have heard about Super Mario Bros. So those are the run of the mill, but that's okay if that's you. I'm open-minded. I honestly believe that be honest, video games are a waste of time, video games can have some learning value, video games are only a reflex-based pastime, video games can be used as a learning device, a learning tool. Cyber person. Even if you're in the red area, that's perfectly fine. Um, chances are video games are not anymore, not just what they used to be like when you had more knowledge of them. I believe that our students or young people their age do not play video games for the most part. Play video games 31 to 49 percent approximately, sorry, I skipped approximately 30% or less, or over 50%. What do you think? Think about students at this university or your institutions. Oh, interesting. I will not disclose the answer yet, but Please bear your own answers in mind as we go through uh, my presentation. As an adult and an educator involved in education, I believe that most adults do not play video games, some less than 30%, some about 50% or over 50%. What do you think? Okay, I'm not going to disclose this answer yet, but bear that in mind. In learning and or teaching a foreign language, we're all foreign language learners here. What have you used for your own or teaching? Digital videos, digital videos on websites, digital videos, websites, and comics or graphic novels, all of the above, and also games. I mean, the old generation, so we used to only have songs, pretty much. The first time I watched the movie in English, I was... I already finished up college, I think. Okay, so we got some advanced people, and that's the yellow and green. But even if you're in the four and three, uh, good, you're ready. You're ready have been exposed to what in second language, foreign language learning is a realia. Realia are cultural artifacts that you can use to put your language skills in practice. A menu, for example, in English, is a form of realia. Games sold in the US and Europe can typically be played, video games, only in English, in English and Spanish, English, Spanish and French, in multiple languages. Of course, here it would be English and German rather than English and Spanish. What do you think?
Yeah, wherever I read Spanish, I should have read German. Interesting. So some of you know that a game, even in America, uh, mostly contains, most of the times contains multiple language access. And that means everything, dialogues, menus, or written text. Thank you. So uh, let's see how we fare here. Uh, presentation, ab actual. Okay. So um, in my intro, I'll be talking about my experience in uh, teaching with games, but we'll also deal with how can we encourage our students to learn with games and uh, through autonomous learning. And then I will talk about what I do, which is course-based video game learning. And I structure my presentation like video games are structured. So we got a, an elementary novice level and then intermediate and then advanced. The novice is student-driven, so we let Possibly we don't know much about video games, but chances are our students do. So how can we bear that in mind and use it in our uh, learning? Uh, the intermediate level is a cooperation between teachers and students, and the last one is what I do, which is it's teacher-driven um, and how to use video games as realia. So, what I do is game-based learning, and I use specifically use video games. So you heard a lot of, uh, about uh, talk about uh, gamification. That's not quite what I do, but I'll uh, talk about that later. So some recent video games are like movies, but they add something else that movies don't have, which is the interactive component. But think about a good quality, engaging narrative. There is a narrative, there is a storyline, there is movie quality acting dialogues, uh, digital acting. So they combine all the advantages that movies have. We all have watched movies in sub with subtitles to improve our English. But they offer something more. Interaction. Interaction is the key. Now, when I'm talking about video games, this is what I am talking about. And I can show it to you. That's a PlayStation 4 system, but actually... I think it's easier for right now to use this. So this is a murder mystery tale. All the games that I use in my teaching have engaging narratives. And uh, why? Because we as beings are defined by narratives. Whenever we meet someone new, what are we doing essentially? We're telling the story of our lives and we listen to their stories. So narratives have been proven to be very productive in second language acquisition. So bless you, salute. So we're working with that. Um, so there's the father, the mother, and the elder son and the younger son. So I use them as we remember when we were learning English and we had the cool teacher in class, not that I'm cool, mind you, but the cool teacher in class that would say, okay, let's use a song today, and we used to like it, and we had to do fill in the gaps, okay? So there is a lot of that, because that's how realia work. Uh, so I use this game at the elementary level. I start using it after four weeks of Italian. Okay, so their knowledge is very basic at that point. They are able to introduce themselves, uh, get to know other people, talk about their age, how old other people are, talk about the family, and basic actions. And I use this because this game is uh, uh, as vocabulary related to house and parts, family tradition, celebrations, and work. So these are the things that my students will have learned already in through traditional, regular learning. But how can I reinforce that? For example, I can create activities. So have you been paying attention? Let's see, because we have another little Kahoot for you. So here we go. So we don't need that. We need a listening comprehension test, heavy rain, play. So this is actually something that I've done in English with a local high school. They invited me to talk to their students grade 9th uh, through 13. And uh, this is for elementary level learners. And it's a simplified version of something that I do 
So uh, the pin is 5811890. I want to be a bit mindful of time. Don't worry too much, it's a game, so we're gonna have a winner and second best and third best, but you're not gonna get a grade for it. Okay, more tickers, yay! Start. So, five questions, are you ready? So, this is the basic listening comprehension. Whose birthday is it today? The father, the mother, the elder son, or the younger son? You also had to observe the scene. <laughs> I'm devious. Which one was the... Oops. I won't say anymore. No spoilers. Yes, it was the elder son, Jason. Now, next question. Oh, me. You're winning. How old is the person whose birthday is today? 10, 8, 11, or 12. I think we can skip. Oh, okay. More takers. No, I'm just gonna skip. This was set for a ninth grade level. Yes, 10 years old. Oh, me, you're still rocking. Has Ethan, the father, worked today? No, he has not. Yes, but not much. No, absolutely not. Yes, he made good progress. Okay, I'm going to skip more tickets now. Yes, he made good progress. But if you answer the next one over, that could have been argued. Okay, so that's where we open up the discussion in class. Ika, yay. What does Ethan have to get for his wife? We tend to have, remember, they will have had Italian only for five weeks at this point. And of course, we use the game in Italian. Okay. Yep, this was the easy question. But you get points for answering quick, so Nick was really fast. Where does Ethan get plates from? See, we have something simple, and then that was a part of the house, of the kitchen, living room, and it was a little complicated. So this is normally a word that they will not know. They will know basic words like table, chair, but they had to listen and it was cupboard. And Mr. X, you rock. No disclosure for now. Oh, we're teachers, we're grown-ups. We are silently happy about our accomplishments. So, um, Remember when you started learning English or another foreign language? Remember what it was like after a little over a month? Remember how difficult it was to listen to your first listening comprehension exercise and it sounded like blah, 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 blah? Okay, this is what we do. We focus on keywords. Keywords are words that they will al al already have learned through traditional methods they were reinforcing and then the power of context and guiding comprehension of a complex text through keywords, cognates, and overall comprehension through the acting scene. Los videojuegos funcionan no porque entretienen, sino porque desafían. Video games work not because they entretienen, cognate, 
entertain you. Well, they also entertain, but they work because they challenge you. There's a, there's a fian. And this is a, a colleague who uh, created uh, Dragon Box School, which is a series of games for elementary, middle school, and high school to learn mathematics. I wish I had that. So why do games work? Uh, so because they're difficult. They challenge you. Sometimes you have to repeat the same sequence over and over again in order to pass it. Uh, the intensity focuses attention and the dialogues provide ins and guidance and that also help focusing the attention. But why? Because second language acquisition tells you that this is agency. You're not just passive, you're active. And uh, narratives have been proven to uh, work for languages and problem solving also has been uh, proven to work for languages. And this is the basis of these games. But why should we care? What if I have no interest whatsoever in video games? Well, you don't have to, but you want to bear in mind that your students do. Because uh, one of the statistical institutes in America, more about American statistics from my colleague Terry Tomasic, um, that's what he does. But the Pew Research Center puts out surveys every uh, two years or so. Half of American adults, so people over 21 play video games, but things change for college age because for the college age, which is 18 to 22 in America, 70% of them play video games at least once in a while, occasionally. And it used to be a male-oriented uh, hobby, not anymore. No substantial differences between females and males. So approximately 70% play video games. That is something that we should bear in mind because this is something that many of our students care about. Hmm, how can we exploit that? How can we use that to our advantage? And many of them play online. Have you ever met teenagers who play online? I met 15-year-old who are the sons and daughters of my friends who speak English better than I do. Never been to America, but they play World, World, uh, World of Warcraft or uh, Fortnite online with other kids and they chat. Their language skills have improved uh, dramatically. Now, this is the, most, the latest data, data. This is teenagers, so ages 13 to 19. So, and this is data from March and April. 92% of, oops, sorry, 92% of boys have access to a gaming console like the PlayStation 4. 75 of girls do. 97, 83%. So girls, a little less, but still, it's overwhelming numbers. Why does this work? Welcome to uh, game-based learning, TPR theory, and flow theory. What is it? Game-based learning, that's what I do. So you are here a lot about gamification, but gamification is a reward system. We can have gamification inside a class, for example, what I sort of did today. I turned a little bit of my presentation into a quiz show, and I got you involved a little bit. Uh, I can also center a whole course as a quiz show where you know, we get a winner who gets points. But that's just reward. Reward is fine, but it's not actual learning. Game-based learning it's pedagogy connected to play theory and that actually works with because we apply critical thinking. On the file that I shared, there are five uh, essential books on game-based learning if you want to learn more. I'm partial to Matthew Farber's latest book, um, which is my Bible currently at the moment. So, total physical response. I love the interaction of sciences and learning. So, Neurology and neurolinguistics, neurosciences tell you that we remember 90% of what we do. So I started playing video games and learning languages in the same year, 1975. I started learning English. I was in grade six, prima media. And I started learning English and playing video games, Pong. How do you learn languages from Pong? You don't. Pac-Man? No, you don't. But in the mid-80s, we started having uh, textual adventures. and. Uh, there was one by Activision, 1985. It was called Alter Ego. Basically allowed you for the first time to 
play another life, to live an alternative life from birth through death, which for a teenager was, well, I was, no, I was 21 at the time. Well, it was quite the experience. And I was playing it with a dictionary, dictionary on my lap, looking up words that I didn't know. And then after about three months of doing that and fully completing the game, I picked up a novel and I realized that, hey, I can understand much better than I used to. Why? So I started reflecting on that. Why? Desafian, they challenge you. They challenge you and repetition and involvement. But also there was something and neurological studies pointed on that direction. It's the doing that really involves me. Uh, but also something else, uh, so Chikse Mihaly's flow theory, the best learning happens when we forget that we are learning. And most of the gamers, have you, do you have teenagers? And do you have teenagers that do not answer you when they're playing? Yeah, that would be me. Uh, because you're so immersed, you're so involved in it, and that's actually when you acquire the most. So, this, what I do can also be applied to social sciences because many of the games that I'm using have content that works for social sciences. Uh, more about that later. So, are you or are your students aware that with any modern video game system, I can show you how, with any present day system, you can get games in different languages. Sometimes you simply change the system language to Italian, French, what Japanese, what is it that you want to improve, and the games will come out automatically in that language. Or sometimes it's a combination, you have to open up the game and then go into that. Uh, so the default languages in Europe, in, actual, in Europe you get more languages. So the games that, uh, the game that I showed you, for example, as content in English, Spanish, French, German, Italian, Portuguese, and Russian. In the American version, your shorts changed. You only get English, Spanish, and French. But technical advancements, I have my university buy games on Amazon Italy, and I can use them in America. They work. That was not the case until a few years ago. So yay, hooray for technical advancements. So, we can encourage our students to bring that into the classroom, even if we don't know anything about it. But we can use our students as resources. We can also have a cooperation, and then some of us can be more into gaming. And so how can we use the fact that 70% of our students will like games? Let's say that, for example, we have a student who is learning Spanish. We can encourage the students to play games in Spanish or French or whatever it is, German as a second language. The trick is it has to be played in Spanish with Spanish subtitles. Forget about your own language because otherwise you're constantly translating. There is a learning curve, so at the beginning it's really steep and you want to tell them, don't worry if at the beginning it gets hard, you will see, then it gets much easier fast. Repetition, repetition, context context. Um, meaningful playtime. Remember, these are students who use a substantial part of their free time on gaming. Use that meaningfully. Encourage them to download the word reference app. Remember my tale of the large dictionary on my lap? Mobile or reference multilingual Collins dictionary in the palm of your hands and it's smarter than other uh, programs in my... And context always uh, works for uh, learning. But also, students who self-identify as gamers, according to the Pew Research Center, is only about 10%. But those students who really care about gaming can also improve learning more about games in that language. So let's say that you have a student who is learning German as a second language. You discover, you bring that up, you encourage them to talk about the fact that they like video games. How about 
encouraged them to give a presentation in German on a video game that they like, a game review, but they have to use German sources that they need to quote, YouTube videos and uh, game reviews. IGN has websites all over the world in, with content in that language and is the main website about information about video games. Do they play online? Encourage them to make e-friends by playing with people from other countries. Uh, by the way, if you have children, uh, Nintendo consoles are the safest for online gaming and the Switch will, are gonna, is going to have, um, already has some uh, features of that. So if, let's say that you got a 12-year-old and you want the 12-year-old to practice a foreign language, they can do safely on Nintendo consoles. So uh, League of Legends and other massive online uh, games like Fortnite, they work really well. Why context? Because they already have a common share contest. They're all passionate about that game. So they can start communicating about that game, but normally they move on to talk about themselves and make friends that way. Uh, the advantage of video games has a lot of related content like uh, comic books and, uh, and more, and that all works. The next level is teacher-student cooperation. For example, you can use some gaming elements in your courses. Kahoot, that I've used, is a great tool and I know it's used at this university, thanks to the help of your uh, e-learning center. Plotagon. So let's say that you, you're, you're in English as a second language or you're in social studies where you use narratives. Plotagon students, uh, it's free for educators. It's an avatar-based storytelling app. So you write a plot with characters and it gets animated for you. It's like creating a virtual movie. Let's say that you are, you are teaching English as a second language, foreign language. You can use Google Street View and give us an assignment for students to show how to get from Trafalgar Square, Square to Harrods and using Google Street View to describe, go straight, turn left, turn right, which is, as we all know, if we travel, is one of the main survival skills we need in a foreign country. Besides, excuse me, where's the bathroom? The way I put it is, I learned English in school in the traditional way. By age 15, I could read Shakespeare. I would not have been able to say, excuse me, where's the bathroom, let alone understand the answer. Moving to America, I quickly realized that that was paramount. So that's what I do with my students. How can uh, help them survive? And mind you, as you might know, the Italian school system is very rigorous. And I'm a gymnasium student, so I had my 12 years of Latin, 10 years of Greek, well, because I also studied at the university. So I'm all for serious gaming. Um, I haven't had open criticism, but I've heard comments, well, but you know, you should use literature to teach Italian. I do that too. So I want to make it very clear. Video games are not substituting for traditional learning. Video games add to it. And I will say more about uh, how I structure my class, but um, RPG maker, role playing game maker. This is a very good tool for languages, but also social sciences. And I want to point out, I didn't know about that. The students in my course who told me, can we use that for the, our final project? Sure. So you create a little uh, story. Visual novel, you create comics. Uh, Swift, you can create games. Uh, Game-based learning helps in acquisition. So what do I do? As I explained already, I do not use games to replace traditional learning. So uh, we basically, thanks to advancements, we have for elementary Italian and all the languages, we have an excellent textbook that has, is connected to Pearson's My Language Lab that basically has an excellent online program that is what we used to call Language Lab that has everything, speaking, understanding, exercises, grammar, vocab, 
it's fantastic. So that allowed me to flip the classroom. So for, we have three hours of 50 minutes each. For 30 minutes is traditional language learning textbook based. And then we use video games for 20 minutes to reinforce what we have learned that week or what we're learning that week. So to reinforce previous knowledge. I reinforce grammatical points, I reinforce cultural points, personal interest. What I'm applying is Dr. Puente Dura's uh, summer model. Uh, what is that? So video games shouldn't just substitute for what we can do traditionally. That's stupid. Should not just augment what we do with traditional learning, pointless, but should modify the way we learn or should redefine the way we learn. So what I'm striving for is modification or redefinition. How do I do that? using video games as realia. So I got my students to identify, let's say that we learned are verbs, the first conjugation, andare, parlare, etc. So I select a section of a video game that has those verbs in the context. And I got my students to identify those. Hey, traditional listening comprehension, reading comprehension exercises, etc. Identify, but I also get them to identify new things that are in context. Can you figure it out from the context? Can we augment, but can we modify, redefine what we do? Acquire a series of exercises where they have identified, now they play with that to ultimately make their own and to be able to create. More about that later. So, gaming. We have substantially two types of uh, video games that can be used for learning. The so-called serious gaming, meaning games that were created by educators for the specific purpose of educating, and commercially available games, which is actually mostly what I use, and this is why. So, serious gaming are available in all fields, including sciences, social sciences, and everything. So they're created by educators. Um, we can have, they can be online, they can be software based, and can be also VR, virtual reality. Good point is that they're ready for learning because that's their specific aim. Uh, cost can be a challenge because especially at the university level, they can be very sophisticated and very pricey products. But there's a question about engaging. Has anybody ever used Wiz Oscar Lake? In 1996, it was the first video game to learn languages. I played for 15 minutes. It was so boring. It hurt. Why? Because remember when you were children and somebody gave you educational toys? There were some cool and exciting educational toys and then there were dreadfully boring ones. And, and that is why. So engagement can be a challenge with those. So what do I actually use? is commercially available games, meaning you can go to the shopping center and buy them at any point online. So not specifically created for the purpose of learning, learning, but for example, a game like Assassin's Creed will have behind it a team of hundreds of people, including historians, archaeologists, social sciences, linguists, that will have reconstructed everything about that time period. How I can I use that to my advantage? That's what I do. So they're very good. They have content for uh, history and social sciences besides the, besides the humanities, but they need to be, I cannot simply get to class and go, let's play, let's learn. It doesn't work that way. I need to prepare the learning. How? Backward design. What do I want my students to learn first? in the course, in that specific period, class period. Scaffolding. Let's move from what they already know to what they can figure out from context to more complex data or structures. And task-based learning. Encourage them to cooperate, exchange ideas, work together to produce a final result. Uh, Good point is that they're inexpensive products. They're about 60 euros. 
And a console is much less expensive than a, a gaming PC. Uh, a good quality level PC is about 1,500 euros. This was uh, 299, I think. So, um, some ground rules. I'm a pacifist, so I don't use war games. I'm chicken, which means I'm fearful, coniglio in Italian. That's why no horror games. But there is a very good game, very interactive storyline. It's called Vampire that is about to come out. I might use that one if I don't scream. So I already talked about that. Agency and problem solving are the key. Uh, so what do I do? So I'm devious. I know that my students like games. I know that my students will go to the language lab and play on their own or go back home and play on their own. So I select. I selected a variety of games, but we work in class only on minutes, uh, segments of about 10 minutes of gaming. So the gaming part is 20 minutes because we got 10 minutes of gaming and 10 minutes of exercises, reflection, guidance. Uh, I selected the beginning of six, seven, eight games because what I'm deviously doing, I'm enabling my students to go back home or to the lab and continue playing on their own. And based on my experience, it actually works. So I pick a segment, let's say heavy rain, as I explained, works well for family, parts of the house, etc. And I build a series of exercises. The actual playing in class is we have a system. I elicit volunteers. Each volunteer plays for about five minutes. But the rest of the class, since it's a language communication, needs to participate. How? Give commands. Go right. Go left, don't open that door, open that door, open that drawer. So for example, my students in the gaming class were able to use commands after three weeks of Italian. Normally that happens after four, eight or 10 semesters. So using the language helps. So this is an example of the, this is from the first worksheet I use in my class. Task-based, so this focuses, for example, just so that you know, on definite, indefinite articles as they are presented in the text. Masculine, feminine, singular, plural, is, uh, using the words from the text. And then we move on to essere, to be, and to have, and the are verbs. Now, I'm in the humanities, but I'm a scientist, so how do I measure learning? Outcomes assessment, I'm a firm believer. So. Direct measure, we have testing. So I test my students and compare them to a regular class uh, uh, that was taught without video games and surveys to measure how students feel about their learning. And uh, uh, the results were actually interesting. So since 2009 until 2016, I use gaming as part of the lab activities. So there is one hour lab each week. And the way it works is we expose, we explore comics in Italian, songs in Italian, movies in Italian, literature, poetry, graphic novels, and then we also use gaming. So on that specific section where I've been using gaming, students enjoyed it, even students who hated video games at that point. Why? Because they're narratives. Many of the games that I use, like Life is Strange, we gave our title, Life is Strange, I, def I, de I define Life is Strange as the best coming of age novel that I have not read, I have played. It's the story of an 18 year old girl and uh, shows what life is like for an 18 year old student in an American high school, including bullying, uh, weapons being sold like candy in America, uh, abuse, violence, everything is dealt with very honestly but it has an engaging storyline. So I tell my students, you don't like video games, but do you like the TV series Stranger Things? Oh yes, 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 Stranger Things is the next big thing in America. I'm like, it's like Stranger Things. There is a mystery. There is something strange going on, we have to figure out why. And they like that, it's engaging. But what matters to me is that they had a 9% point in points increase in the median score. So very quickly, I also created a class, thanks to our e-learning center, I'm all in favor of the learning center, yes. 
Uh, I also created a class, and results are preliminary, so, uh, but what they showed is promise. Uh, two semesters in one, they learned the material in four months, and they were struggling a little bit in the midterm because they were cramming a lot of information. But the final was medium, two points higher, and they learned all the material, and they continue learning on their own, playing games, so that was good. Resources, that's our learning studio. That screen can be split in 16 different forms. I already told you about that. That is our beautiful classroom. So I love e-learning. And as I will tell in my next workshop, this wouldn't have been possible without the help of our e-learning uh, center at San Luis Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.